Hello friends, my name is Nick and today we're going to talk about my personal favorite plant and planter combinations that I have in my home. I have a lot of plants as you probably know and therefore I have a lot of planters. So there's a lot of combinations but I've picked out six that have really stood out to me and constantly stand out to me to the point that I don't really ever want to repot them out of their planters because they look so good. When I first started my indoor gardening journey, I was all about the plants. The planter was not important to me. Also, I was in college, so as most college students don't have, I did not have a lot of money. So I would just get whatever I could find and worked and looked good enough in my opinion. But in my mid-20s, as my home aesthetic started to form, it became an equal parts relationship, let's say, between that plant and planter. In fact, the planter is almost more important to me now because the planter has to match my home. The plant doesn't have to match my home where it already does by just being a plant. So I put a lot of thought into my planters these days. I'm always keeping my eyes peeled for nice planters and I have a couple of brands of planters that I really enjoy. And of course, I'm going to share them with you today. However, this is not a sponsored video by any means. I will share, if I can, links to where you can purchase these planters, but this isn't like a I'll earn commission or anything. It's just me, out of the goodness of my heart, sharing the planters that I really like. So let's get started with, oh, I really wanna talk about this one first. Now, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure this planter is not made anymore. I think it's, I forget the name. It's not out of print discontinued that's the word I'm all tangled up on the floor here I did not do a very good job getting my pile of plants all situated here so this is my syndapsis pictus exotica sitting inside this gorgeous of beige taupe planter that has this kind of like crackling to it I've seen still this in like a square planter I don't really like square planters but it's still the same glaze I think is available I haven't seen the circle one I forget what the wholesaler was so unfortunately I can't share that but this was the first plant and planter that I bought myself when I first got my job at the plant store that I used to work at so I feel like that has a place in my heart for that reason but I also just am obsessed with it I love the bluish green foliage of the Syndapsis pictus exotica paired with the taupe beige not really good with this color scheme right here knowing all those different hues and all that but it just looks amazing it's been living in here forever I've definitely talked about this needing to be repotted multiple times throughout the past couple of years and it's still sitting in the same soil that's been living in I just give it a little bit of fertilizer now you know what I mean to try to keep it happy but it still looks great it's still pretty full up top of course we have lost a couple of those lower leaves so if I point it in this direction it's not going to look nearly the same but you can clearly tell which side is facing the light. But this bluish green leaf with an earth tone planter is just to die for in my opinion. And these color leaves really do just stand out amongst the rest in my opinion because they are a little bit more bluish and silvery. So if you have like a couple golden pothos or like the lemon lime colored plants, this is really going to look amazing if you stick it in with those. But you can see up close, just the gorgeous crackle on the planter. Super neat. It's definitely like a mass produced planter. I feel like most of the ones I'm gonna be talking about today. In fact, every single one other than this is not mass produced. But like I said, this is unfortunately not available if I'm aware, but you know, you could keep an eye out at thrift stores. I've often found discontinued planters that used to be available when I worked at the plant store at thrift stores and I'll always scoop them up because they're always a really good deal and they look fantastic even if they are mass produced. They still did a really good job creating this, but I do have a space in my heart for uh, you know, hand-thrown, small, business-owned planters. I think that's much more my cup of tea. Speaking of which, let's talk about one of those today. So this is a brand of planter that I am a really, really big fan of. I have a bunch of these around my home. This is my favorite combination of all the combos that I have though. So this is my Hoya Curtisii and it's sitting inside this planter by Brunning Pottery. Their small business is located in Washington state. And if you do live in that area of the United States, you might be able to find these at your local houseplant stores. I know that there are a lot of houseplant stores that sell these but in my area of the United States, it's few and far between. But if you are lucky enough to live by a houseplant store that does sell these, or if you're visiting, I highly would recommend picking them up. I get mine on pistolsnursery.com. They don't really have that many to choose from. They usually have the white and the celadon, and then they, I think they'll have like a rotating color every now and again. Pistols Nursery, if you're listening, 
offer more colors. I would totally buy them all the time. But yeah, this is uh, dipped stoneware, I think it's called. And I love that it's in the hanging planter. I think the hanging planters that they make are incredible. And they really add some like juxtaposition, but also similarities when I have these hanging up with the plants that I have in the macrame hangers. Juxtaposition because the rope is a little bit different the way it's not like holding the planter, but similar because it's still using like this jute rope and I use a lot of jute rope. So I really appreciate that for a little bit of uniqueness. But this shape of planter, the way that they make them really inspired me when I started doing pottery, which I don't do pottery anymore, haven't for a while at least, and I would love to do it again, which it's so annoying. The studio that I used to go to is literally like a block away from where I live now, but they closed down and they moved across the city. So would have been really convenient, but that is neither here or there. Uh, I was just really inspired by this planter shape because I always wanted to get planters that were like this kind of vibe when I worked at the houseplant store, but we couldn't find any. It was too expensive to get these delivered and there was just really not that many good places to order pottery from and all the wholesale places in my opinion are just like the mass produced planters all look the same except for that crackle one really stood out to me. I'm really picky, so to each their own. I'm extremely biased, but breading pottery, in my opinion, knocked out of the park with this planter shape. I think they even have a couple more shapes of planters. This is just the one that I always see on pistolsnursery.com and available on a couple other websites online and stuff like that. So uh, plenty more to choose from with all their wonderful glazes. This is just the only style of planter that I have in my home, but I love it. I have probably like 20 of them around my home because I just, really am obsessed with the shape and the colors all really just mesh with one another. I just love the like earthy vibes that they have and most of their glazes are pretty earthy or at least like earthy tones of colors which speaking of earthy tones of colors and also speaking of the pottery that I used to do oh my gosh a tangled mess on the floor that Hoya Curtisia is grabbing onto everything. So this is a planter I actually made myself. You can kind of see if I hold back up the burning pottery planter. Ugh. Do I have one? Let me just grab this one right here. Sorry. I have one that's a little bit easier to grab than this one with the Hoya Curtisii off camera. So this is the shape, and this is kind of my inspired shape. Also, I a, was a beginner potter, so didn't really know exactly what I was doing, although my teachers tried very hard. But yeah, I'm just showing you that this is my personal take, and this is where I completely drew my inspiration from, 1,000%. I really love the color of this planter though, and you know, if you follow me, I'm not a fan of blue, and this is a little blue, it's a little blue. One of my classmates when I was doing pottery uh, would call this color a uh, Statue of Liberty green, and I love that, just like the tarnished copper color, it is really, really fun, and it goes really well with my Cebu, ugh, so hard to say, Cebu blue pothos. I just love the way it's just so relaxed. This is not a standalone plant. This is a fitted in between a couple other plants and let it just drape down. And because the plant matches the planter, you barely even notice it, which I really enjoy. I think it's really fun to play with the color of your plants with the planter, whether you're contrasting completely or uh, complimenting is the word I'm looking for with this one, as you can see. But since I am personally not like a big blue fan at all, and I'm always saying that I'm the only blue thing in my home, I wear a lot of blue, blonde hair, fair skin, blue eyes, of course, I look amazing in blue. So I like to be the only blue thing in my home. But this can stay, this can absolutely stay. In fact, it's, it's more green than blue. They called it Philly green at the studio. So very fitting. Also, Philadelphia pride. Always here for that, but I just loved a little dip too. Every time I was doing pottery, I loved dipping my entire piece in one color, then dipping the top little rim in a little bit of one color because the color always looks different when it's sitting on top of another color. And it was always just so fun to see that the way the combinations would work and the different kilns and blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna stop boring <laughs> you with this stuff at this point. But if you ever get the chance to do pottery, if you do appreciate, uh, hand-thrown pottery yourself, I highly recommend doing pottery because it really makes me appreciate pottery a lot more. The prices that I pay for pottery is much more justified after doing it myself. I can say that. I feel like I often hear people complaining about the price of pottery, but it is absolutely an art. Speaking of uh, the combinations, playing with a plant and planter combination to complement each other, I am obsessed with this ugly name of spring snow. You've probably 
heard me talk about this plant 15 times at this point in the last year. I can't shut up about this thing because it looks freaking fake. Especially this fake ass looking plant in this beautiful planter right here. So this is a planter by Berg's Pottery. I'm also a very big fan of Berg's Pottery and have a lot of their pottery in my home. They have glazed planters. This is obviously a glazed one right here. And then they have unglazed. They have a couple colors of glazed. Uh, I only have the green and the yellow in my home. I think they have like a navy blue and a white and a gray and a pale pink. They have a bunch of different colors, but the emerald green and the mustard yellow that they have really fit my home to the T. And then they also have the unglazed, like darker basalt color and then like a pinker, orangey-ish terracotta color. All gorgeous. The glazed ones cost about double the price of the unglazed ones, so. Uh, definitely a little bit more of an investment, but I have seen them online for cheaper prices. I will include the website where I personally purchase my Berg's pottery from below, and sometimes there are really good deals. Sometimes the prices are what you'll see in stores, but a green planter in particular, I just find so much fun in playing with one because I love green. Green is the most natural of all the colors of the rainbow. I think we could all agree. So it's just really fun to play with a green plant and a green planter. And I personally think I knocked it out of the park with this combination and like I'm never repotting this. I'm leaving this in here for literally ever until this plant dies. I just, I'm obsessed with it. I wouldn't, I won't be as happy with this plant if it's in a different planter. And I think I feel the same way about pretty much all of the plants that I'm talking about today. And let me just grab my Cebu Blue Pothos once more so you can kind of see two plants right next to each other that both are kind of just complementing each other with the plant and the planter. I think it's so much fun. Really just doesn't catch the eye as much, but I, I love it. They catch my eye, but they're not going to be stealing the attention from people when they come to my home. They might be noticing other things and that's kind of important to me when I have a house full of 350 plants because most people are gonna come to my home and see all my plants immediately. So if I can try to make them blend in a little bit better, I am here for that. So this one has much more of a modern vibe in my opinion with this cylindrical planter combined with just like this like straight up tree. So this is my uh, Ficus Elastica Teneki. I don't know if you can even see the whole freaking plant. It's so tall. <laughs> Uh, it looks amazing, but it's just one little tree sitting inside this cylindrical planter here. So this planter is from Stump. They have a couple stores here in Philadelphia, and I know that they are also located in a handful of other cities throughout the United States. So definitely check if Stump's in your city. They do uh, planters that they only sell in their store. So they're like commissioned for their store by like a mom and pop seller, small business, similar to like the Brunning Pottery. I think they also have it in terracotta and then they also have them in like glazed black and white, which is a lot more modern. I don't think that would necessarily fit my aesthetic in my home, but uh, I'm sure many people would die over these cylindrical white and black planters, especially with a plant like this where it's got a lot of color and would really pop with the white or the black in a modern home. They also have a couple other shapes, like more like planter shapes, like bowl shapes, I think. So highly recommend checking out. I don't know if they have a website. If, I, if they do, I'll link it below. But yeah, I just really love this look. This is a little bit more new for me. I have another one of these planters with a little monstera in it and I think it's cute. I've had it for a couple years and I want another one. I will say these unglazed ones, just like regular terracotta, do weather over time. So if you like it to look like perfect and not, do you know what I mean by weather? Like the water like seeps through and the minerals are like on the outside, like a weathered terracotta pot. So do prepare for that, but I think that just kind of makes it fit my own aesthetic even more. I do feel that this style planter with this style of plant, this upright columnar plant with a cylindrical planter would look a little bit better as a standalone plant rather than mixed together in a plant display. Like I kind of have it over in my bedroom on a windowsill with a couple other plants that don't necessarily match the vibe. Like if I was living in an apartment like my old apartment, which has a much more modern vibe and I only had a handful of plants, this would look amazing so i love it i think it's a perfect perfectly stylish plant i just maybe don't have it styled the way i envision in my home but it doesn't stop me from loving it any less i think it's freaking amazing 
And I do have one more I want to talk about today. I do have to reach back here and grab it because I just didn't want to take it out of my beautiful display that I have going on behind me here. So this is my Euphorbia Leucunura. I forget the common name of this house plant. Is Madagascar Jewel? No, I think that's a different plant. Anyway, uh, my Euphorbia Leucunura inside this planter by Aloe Frost. Yes, it does have a little dinker on it. We're obsessed. I just love this little face planter. I'm not usually obsessed with the face planters. I always see like face planters when I'm at like Marshalls or Home Goods. But this handmade, well thought out planter that has a lot of character, I am just obsessed with. It did take me a long time to figure out what kind of plants I wanted inside this planter. At first, I just kind of like stuck a little handful of preserved sheet moss in the top and I would just set an air plant in there, which also an amazing way in my opinion to display this planter but after a little while i kind of figured i wanted to put a plant in it and i remember getting this uh what is this the euphorbia <laughs> i forget the common name of it i got it from steve's leaves which i will use i will leave on screen my code i said there was no commissions but i will get commissioned if you use the code on screen uh, Philly Foliage, you can save 15% from stevesleaves.com if you are interested in this plant or want to see what else they have to offer. But when I first planted it inside, it was much lower. It didn't have any of this trunk. It was just a couple of leaves coming out of the planter and they weren't all leaning towards the front as they are now. I always have to remind myself when I'm buying a plant at the store or when you get a plant delivered to you, no matter the way it looks, it's going to look a thousand percent different a year later. Whether it grows swimmingly and gets a bunch of leaves or it dies. It's always going to look different. I remember when I worked at the houseplant store and if I got a tray of plants that I wanted to bring one home, I would look for the best looking plant in the tray. And I'm sure we all do that. We can't help it. We want a good looking plant. We want instant gratification. But I constantly need to remind myself that None of my plants in my home that I have had for longer than a year look anything like the way they looked when I first bought it. So not really an important tangent today, just a little thing I'm reminding myself constantly with the growing season coming up and all my plants are just springing into action, which I'm obsessed with. But this just looked completely different when I first got it and I was obsessed with it, of course, was very happy with it, but now I'm even more obsessed with it. I love the way it looks on the shelf back here. It's not receiving the most light, but it's still obviously receiving enough light where it's spinning out all these leaves. This did lose a couple leaves over the winter time, which is why it does have more of a trunk now, but you can see the trunk is even like thickening up or I mean why, why there's less leaves on the trunk and why there's more trunk. It's got more trunk because it's been growing, but the leaves are all up top because it did lose a couple over the winter. But now that it's the growing season, they're getting spat back out again, which I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. I, I love it. But you can't tell me this isn't just literally perfect. It's so cute. I'm probably going to have to repot it sooner than later. This was in the same exact size planter when I potted in here and I wasn't expecting it to grow as well as it's growing, which is always a nice surprise. So I'll leave it in here for the following growing season. But come next springtime, whether it's getting too tall for my shelf, depending on how much it does grow this growing season or whatever we're dealing with, we'll probably need to get into a larger planter and maybe move it a little bit closer to the light where the leaves aren't going to be pressing up against the top of my shelf back there. It's literally so cute. <laughs> I love it. Uh, one of the customers that would often come in at Urban Jungle, Dawn, actually gifted this to me. So if you are watching Dawn, thank you so much. It's literally one of my favorite planters. And I think I said already, but it's by uh, an artist called Aloe Frost. I will leave a link in the description below. He's on Instagram at Aloe Frost. But that's all I have picked out today. Those were the six plants that when I walked around my home, I was like, I have to talk about these because I'm going to have a hard time repotting any of these like specifically the syndapsis, like I said, years. You have seen me talk about the syndapsis in the same exact planter, in the same exact soil. I'm lucky it's looking as good as it was now. Obviously, if it wasn't as happy, I would be repotting it in an instant. But it's probably about time that I get that thing out of there. But I don't know. I'm happy with it. It seems happy with it. So what's another growing season? Am I right? But thank you guys so much for joining me today on today's video. My favorite plant and planter combinations that I have in my home. Let me know your favorite plant and planter combinations that you have in your home. Or if I have a different plant and planter combination that I have in my home that has stood out to you in the past that I didn't share in today's video. Let me know because I'm very curious. So thank you guys again for joining me. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram 
and TikTok at Philly Foliage. If you want to support me monetarily, you can subscribe to my Patreon and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Of course, obviously, thank you so much. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.